Food Network's trajectory to success hasn't always been smooth and seamless. Along the way, it has run into several bumps that shook even its most ardent fans to their core. The beloved foodie haven has weathered through several turbulent scandals and pitfalls throughout its run. Join us as we break down the most famous scandals that haunt Food Network even today. Number 20. Ina Garten's Chilling Rejection there was a time when the internet wasn't flooded with Contessa's mouth-watering chocolate cake recipe or make-ahead cranberry sauce for your Thanksgiving dinner. She was being called out for being rude and insensitive to a six-year-old cancer patient, Enzo. Young Enzo was diagnosed with leukemia when he was only three years old. In the years following his diagnosis, he found comfort in watching Food Network, particularly his hero, Ina Garten. This is why his family tried to set up a meeting with Contessa through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. To Enzo's shock and disbelief, Ina refused to meet him not once but twice due to her scheduling conflicts. Unfortunately, the young fan didn't have the liberty of time on his side either, as his health was deteriorating. Enzo's family had detailed their harrowing experience with Ina Garten in a now-defunct blog post. And while the blog went viral, Ina was dragged through the mud for not even taking 10 minutes for Enzo, despite multiple requests by his family. Contessa's public relations teams finally understood that their client had created a mess, but it was too late to clean up. Later, Ina reached out to Enzo for a meetup, which he declined. Instead, the young hero chose to swim with the dolphins as his last wish. But we begin tonight's menu with a visit with Ina Garten, one of the most beloved cooks in the country. Number 19. Ann Burrell's Gender Discrimination Lawsuit You'd think if there's anyone who would understand the struggles of women trying to make it big in the restaurant world, it would be Ann Burrell. But, nope. It seemed like the celebrity sous chef picked a page or two from her mentor, Mario Batali's handbook, and decided to start a culture of discrimination in her restaurant, Centro Vinoteca, in West Village. Food Network came under fire when Burrell's female chefs filed a lawsuit against her for hostile work conditions and workplace gender discrimination, while the details of the lawsuit were kept sealed. The leaked information reveals that Burrell had a knack for calling her female employees derogatory terms. On multiple occasions, she called them inappropriate terms and passed offensive comments on their intimate life. Other than calling them degrading names, she also commented on their private body parts openly. One of the plaintiffs recalled that Burrell had made her cleavage into a discussion topic for the kitchen, which was both embarrassing and humiliating for her. And when she tried to protest, Anne Burrell just brushed her off. The lawsuit also alleged that male workers in the restaurant were treated with respect and dignity. In fact, Burrell went out of her way to appreciate them for their work. When her female employees tried to discuss her discriminatory behavior with her, she got really upset and fired them all. That prompted the female chefs to bring an infamous lawsuit against Anne Burrell, which was settled privately outside the court. Number 18. Mario Batali stole tips from his staff. Ah yes, a celebrity chef with a net worth of at least $25 million wouldn't do petty things like hoarding tips. Well, at least that's what Food Network thought when a class action suit was brought against their homegrown chef, Mario Batali. In June 2010, more than 117 employees from Batali's restaurants in New York City came together to drag their boss to court for skimming tips. According to the lawsuit, Batali's restaurants took 4 to 5 percent of the tips that were given to waiters for serving alcohol and wine to the rich clientele of the famous chef. Batali took a portion of those tips to pay the salaries of sommeliers hired in his bougie restaurants. For months, the chef and his business partners denied the existence of the illegal tipping system that got them under fire in the first place. But his lawyers knew that their boss looked weak in front of a class suit that had all of the receipts in their hands. Two years later, Mario decided to settle on the condition that the private details of the lawsuit were not to be disclosed publicly. But of course, settling a class action lawsuit came with a price, and Mario was forced to eat his words. According to court documents, Mario paid $5.25 million to all individuals who worked at the restaurants as captains, servers, waiters, bussers, runners, back waiters, bartenders, or barbacks from July 22, 2004 to February 14, 2012, and who do not opt out of the settlement. In 2017, Batali was accused by a string of women which ultimately sealed his fallout from Food Network, an American broadcasting company. For the next four years, Batali had to fight off not one but two cases of 
that would go into the court of law. Eventually, Batali and his business partner paid $600,000 to settle one of the cases that was being heard in New York City. Even then, the stories of the celebrated chef groping four women continue to thrive on the internet. Number 17. Nigella Lawson's Drug Abuse Nigella Lawson is a lot of things, but one wouldn't take her as someone who'd do lines of cocaine in the confines of her own home. In 2013, Lawson's spotless image took a hit when a simple case of theft exposed her junkie persona, which took a toll on Food Network. What happened was that Lawson and her ex-husband Charles Saatchi had dragged their former assistants to court for stealing money from them. The Lawson empire relied on Francesca and Elisabetta Grillo, the sister-sister duo that was also responsible for the chef's multi-millionaire net worth. What happened in court was unexpected. The Grillo sisters alleged that they were allowed to use the alleged stolen funds in exchange for hiding Nigella's cocaine addiction from her husband. And well, the chef had to stand, where her infatuation with cocaine became a public affair. Number 16. Robert Irvine serves up fake resume. It's okay to fake it till you make it, but if you seem to overdo the convocation, then the mantra might come back to bite you. That's the story of Robert Irvine, who shot to fame thanks to Food Network's Dinner Impossible. Now, Irvine's culinary skills weren't half bad. In fact, his fans were always excited to learn from the chef who had traveled with King Charles and Princess Diana for decades to serve them delicacies. During his time with the royal couple, Irvine also cooked for American presidents like Bill Clinton, George Bush, and Ronald Reagan. That was an impressive list of credentials for the chef who had shot up through the ranks. He had allegedly started as a chef on a Royal Navy vessel in Britain and had made his way to Buckingham Palace, where he was awarded knighthood for his services. The problem came about when the Royal Palace itself busted Irvine for lying extensively about his royal career. It turned out the chef was never a knight, and he had not even cooked for a server of the royal family, let alone King Charles. For years, Irvine was fabricating stories about his royal encounter, which only happened in his head and dreams. When the explosive news made its way to the internet, Irvine rapidly lost popularity on the channel and outside. His plans for making twin restaurants had to be derailed, and the chef went into debt instantly. After all, Food Network had temporarily fired him from his job at Dinner Impossible. Later, he would make his way back to the show, but Irvine had lost credibility among his audiences and peers. Number 15. Paula Deen's Racial Slur To be fair, Paula Deen seems like a nice woman, but of course her African-American employees would tell you otherwise. You see, around 2013, the celebrity chef had developed a habit of throwing around the N-word way too loosely, despite being white herself. The consequences of a loose tongue were almost turbulent. After all, the chef wasn't solely sued for racially charged language. She had shown herself to be a staunch racist inside and outside her restaurant. Dean's former employee from her restaurant in Savannah, Georgia, sued her for telling insensitive racially discriminatory jokes and throwing around racial slurs. The lawsuit alleged that the employee, named Lisa, was in charge of a wedding catering that Paula had planned. When Lisa inquired her boss about the type of catering she'd want, the Food Network celebrity told her to organize a southern plantation wedding, including waiters dressed as slaves. Lisa was shocked. And despite multiple protests, Paula continued with her racist ideas. That's what prompted her to file a lawsuit against her former boss. Dean admitted to saying the N-word but refused to take responsibility for her racist wedding idea. Later on, she would appear in The Guardian to apologize to her fan base who was deeply hurt. In fact, Food Network had to fire her promptly. But her career took an even deeper nosedive when her representatives tried to defend her for saying the N-word. In a controversial statement, they said, Paula was born 60 years ago when America's South had schools that were segregated. Different bathrooms, different restaurants, and Americans rode in different parts of the bus. This is not today. And well, you can only imagine how things panned out after that lousy justification. Number 14. Jeffrey Zakarian's Bankruptcy Let's be honest. We all loved watching Zakarian on Chopped. But when the star of the show wasn't busy filming his celebrated Food Network show, he was spending his time falsifying pay records from his now-shuttered restaurant, Country. It turns out Zacharian was stealing from his employees in a multitude of ways. In the class-action lawsuit that was brought against him, we got to know about the severity of the chef's crimes. He was docked the pay of his employees for receiving meals from the restaurants for years. But in reality, the servers and chefs alike never got anything to eat at their workplace. On busy days, his staff would 
work overtime and long hours without any compensation whatsoever. On top of that, when Zakarian was caught in the web of his fraud and deception, he tried to falsify the pay records too. And oh boy, no wonder that a large faction of his employees turned against him. And in payment, they sought at least a million dollars and an additional penalty of $250,000. The lawsuit dragged on for ages, and Zachariah found it pretty hard to fund his legal battle. Eventually, to get out of the case, he filed for bankruptcy, and his beloved restaurant, Country, never recovered. Number 13. Sandra Lee's Kwanzaa Cake Crisis Sandra Lee was a somewhat credible chef at Food Network. While she didn't have a lot of expertise in cooking African cuisine, she had a dream of finding her breakthrough moment through her famous Kwanzaa cake. And let us tell you, it was a train wreck. Sure, the viral moment dubbed as an edible abomination put Lee on the map, but it was very hard for the audience to forget about the cake made with corn nuts, pumpkin seeds, and apple pie filling. People who were aware of the African celebration of Kwanzaa found no link between the disastrous recipe and the festival itself. It seemed like Sandra had no idea what she was doing in the kitchen, and well, our hunch was right. Years after the airing of the unfortunate episode, it was discovered that a recipe maker, Denise Vivaldo, was the mastermind behind the hate crime of the Kwanzaa cake. Vivaldo was the undercover recipe ghostwriter for many celebrity chefs at Food Network, and she had sold the recipe for the infamous cake to Lee after claiming she had done her research about African culture and tradition. And well, you can only guess how authentic that gross cake was. Needless to say, Sandra was dragged for two of her crimes, making a terrible Kwanzaa cake, and then of course acting as if she was the one who developed the terrible recipe. Now, you can decide which one of her crimes was better than the other. Number 12. Graham Elliott skimmed tips. Another day, another chef stealing tips from his hardworking servers and barmen. Graham Elliott's self-titled restaurant in Chicago seemed to do well during its hype era in 2012. But the celebrity chef was running his bistro in the most atypical way possible. And well, that's our polite way of saying that he was illegally pooling tips from his waiters and servers only to redistribute them to his cooks and food runners. Yep, in a shocking revelation, it turned out that Elliot would make up for the subpar salaries of his chefs by giving them a portion of the tips that they hadn't earned. The system continued for a while until 13 waiters from the restaurant decided to sue their boss for the loss of the rightful share of their earnings. Graham didn't bother to contest the claims of the lawsuit. He knew that what he was doing wasn't customary. All of the parties ended up settling the lawsuit under undisclosed terms. It was also discovered that the chef wasn't paying his servers minimum wage at certain times. As a result of this explosive lawsuit, Graham's reputation as a restaurateur suffered immensely. Number 11. John Besh's <laughs> harassment scandal. Remember the iconic episode of Iron Chef Showdown where Chef Tori Miller took on Iron Chef Bobby Flay? That was one heck of a fight, but the episode was rather unusual. A celebrity judge was missing from the panel. Now you can't see the mystery judge on the table, but if you look around Chef Giada De Laurentiis carefully, you'll see glimpses of the now disgraced celebrity chef. John Besh. Well, by the time the episode had aired in 2018, Besh had been accused of harassment, assault, and fostering unsafe workplace conditions by 25 of his female employees. Food Network was so distraught that they had to quickly edit Besh out of their celebrated show. In the thorough investigation conducted by Times Picayune, it was discovered that Besh and his business partner had allowed a rampant culture of harassment in his 12 restaurants in the South. Female staff were continuously harassed, abused physically and verbally, and were touched inappropriately by their male co-workers. While John Besh was aware of the gravity of the situation, he refused to do anything about it. In fact, he was also accused of forcing himself onto a waitress multiple times. The woman in question had to stay in a long-term, unwelcome relationship with Besh to keep her job. The lawsuit became an explosive story at the height of the Me Too movement. While the celebrity chef tried to fight the claims brought up by 25 women, there was no place to hide. Eventually, Besh stepped down from his business and made a public apology. He told the public, I alone am entirely responsible for my moral failings. This is not the way the head of a company like ours should have acted, let alone a husband and father. Ever since, Besh's reputation hasn't recovered. The apology came too late and did very little for his victims. Number 10. Bobby Flay's Iconic Shirt Moment Typically, resigning from any job would entail writing a letter to your boss, 
or at the very least, dropping them an email. But Bobby Flay, the star of Iron Chef Showdown, hardly lives by the rules. In 2017, Food Network was left shocked and speechless when Flay took off his apron mid-episode to reveal his shirt saying, this is my last Iron Chef battle ever. The viewers as well as the channel's executives were left confused. Was Bobby playing an elaborate prank? Or was it his way to flip off the Food Network? His intentions were unclear at that time. But for the channel, it was impossible to edit out the clip which caused a major uproar on social media. Later, Flay would call his shirt maneuver a joke, a harmless prank that he pulled on the last episode of the season. But only the insiders knew that he was, in fact, not joking. Apparently, Flay was tired of the channel putting him through a gruesome work schedule. The chef was doing six to eight battles per week that left him physically and emotionally exhausted. While his decision to leave the show was his own, Food Network didn't appreciate his rather quirky methods. Needless to say, Flay didn't return for the next season of Iron Chef Showdown. Number 9. Paula Deen's Diabetic Crisis When your signature dish is a hamburger between sweet, buttery donuts, then perhaps you have the moral obligation to tell your viewers that you have type 2 diabetes. Unfortunately, Paula Deen didn't get this memo. In another turbulent controversy, the celebrity chef earned a new label of notoriety when she revealed that she had hidden her diabetes diagnosis for three years, all of this while teaching her viewers recipes with excessive sugar and butter. Food Network came under a firestorm for allowing their chef to cultivate a profoundly unhealthy eating lifestyle when she was far from following it herself. Paula had self-admittedly given up a lot of sugary foods, including her favorite sweet tea. Her audience felt betrayed, but the channel was also as surprised as we were. Paula didn't bother to tell her bosses about her diagnosis, and they were equally blindsided. But it turns out, the chef also had another ulterior motive to hide her diabetes. At the back of it all, she was negotiating a deal with Novo Nordisk, a pharmaceutical company behind a non-insulin injectable diabetes medication. Paula had signed up for crisp dollar bills to become the face of the drug that was yet to go mainstream. Even in that case, the chef was unwilling to change the way she cooks for her audience. When prompted with criticism, Dean responded that her job was to cook and she couldn't be held responsible for people's choices. And well, we can't say that she doesn't have a point. But leaving your own audiences in the dark was another pretty low moment for Food Network. Number 8. Kat Cora's Driving Under Influence Scandal Let's be honest, it is not easy to dislike Kat Cora. But in 2012, the chef almost found herself behind bars when she was driving with a blood alcohol level more than twice the legal limit. In the retrieved 911 call, the owner of a BMW informed the police of a reckless driver who was wavering around the door, yelling whack things and just being weird. He instantly knew the driver was drunk, and despite driving at a slow speed, she had rear-ended his flashy new BMW. The police recognized the driver to be Kat Cora, the beloved face of Food Network. Thankfully for the channel's reputation, Cora got off easy. She was given three years of probation, suspended jail time, a fine, and nine months in a driving under influence school. She also apologized to her fans, stating, I deeply regret my decision to drive that evening after my designated driver became unavailable. I learned a very important lesson from this experience and take full accountability for my actions. This will never happen again. While fans were upset at Cora for making a reckless decision, her sincere apology was appreciated by many. Number 7. Rachel Ray's Weird Dog Food Rachel Ray is a woman of many talents, but even her die-hard fans found it a little weird when she decided to call herself a pet food expert and released her own line of dog food, called Nutrish. Everyone was skeptical at her career shift, but a portion of the sales of Nutrish went to her own Rachel Ray Foundation, which helps animals in need. Plus, her dog food got picked up by one of the biggest retailers in America, PetSmart. But in 2018, chaos broke loose. A $5 million lawsuit was filed against the chef's brand Nutrish for endangering the lives of the pets it was fed to. The lawsuit alleged that Nutrish foods contain glyphosate, an herbicide used to make weed killers such as Roundup, and well, any person with common sense would know that feeding your dog glyphosate is a terrible idea. Even though Ray wasn't mentioned in the lawsuit directly, she fought back by feeding her dog Nutrish too. While her fans appreciated the bold gesture, others criticized her for putting her pet's life in danger to make a statement. Number 6. Giada De Laurentiis's High Infidelity 
In 2014, Giada de Laurentiis announced that she was splitting with her husband, Todd Thompson, after 11 years of marriage. While there were multiple reasons behind the rocky end of what looked like a romantic affair, the mainstream media was flying high on some scandalous theories too. And well, let's say when there's smoke, there's fire. Multiple news outlets cited that the chef's marriage had ended after her series of extramarital affairs became apparent to her husband. Her divorce perfectly coincided with Bobby Flay's separation from his wife, too. And well before this news had hit the shelves, there were rumors of Giada de Laurentiis's and Flay's scandalous love affair. The celebrity chef was also known to hook up with John Mayer and another close friend, the disgraced Today host Matt Lauer. Even though the chef has denied cheating accusations multiple times, the rumor mill kept on churning. Number 5. Guy Fieri's Homophobia The host of diners, drive-ins, and dives can charm anyone on the camera, but behind the scenes, he's known to be a homophobic and misogynistic nightmare. The creator and the former producer of the show, David Page, accused Fieri of always staring at women's chests while filming the show. Allegedly, the host was pretty confident with his eyeline and didn't make any effort to change his inappropriate behavior. According to Page, he would make terrible, offensive innuendos whenever a woman mentioned cream. To make matters worse, he publicly revealed his dislike for the queer community. In one instance, Fieri had to meet two male co-owners of a hotel, and he kept insinuating that they were life partners. He later on called Paige and made inappropriate remarks about them. Yep, definitely made Paige's job a lot harder. Number 4. Reed Drummond's Racist Joke Remember the old episode of The Pioneer Women where Reed decides to cook Asian hot wings for her friends and family? Well, she was just using the entire moment as a punchline for her racist joke. As soon as she pulled out the tray of Asian hot wings from the oven, her audience gave her disgusted faces in return. She laughed off the moment and said, Just kidding, I wouldn't do this to you guys, and replaced the Asian delicacy with American-style buffalo wings. The show's audience was both shocked and disappointed. While there was an uproar online, it took Food Network five years to pull out that episode from their airtime. It was Eater who had called out Reed Drummond and the channel for their rampant racism. Number 3. Jamie Oliver's Punchy Jerk Rice The host of The Naked Chef isn't known to be a jerk, but the issue arose when he released a Jamaican-inspired product called Punchy Jerk Price, which relayed multiple cultural appropriation accusations against him. You see, there was a threefold problem with the product. Jamie isn't from Jamaica, the recipe has no ties with the country, and well, you won't find jerk rice anywhere in Jamaica either. Jamaican chefs accuse Jamie of hijacking their traditional spice to whitewash a dish. And well, Jamie called the name of the rice a marketing gimmick. The ship had already sailed. Number 2. Patrick and Gina Neely's Fake Act Down Home with Neely's 11-season run became a comfort watch for many. Fans of the show loved seeing Gina and Patrick's blissful, loving marriage as they cooked side by side. But all of a sudden, the couple called it quits, their show ended, and their restaurants were shuttered down. It felt like the Neelys wanted to wipe their existence off the earth. And the reason behind their sudden switch will shock you. The Neelys were never a happy couple. Their marriage had gone sour years ago. And right before Gina could file for divorce, the duo was offered the show on Food Network. For the sake of ratings, Gina had to keep up a happy act with a man she didn't love anymore. By 2014, the marriage had become unbearable for her. She left her shared home and never looked back. Later on, she filed for a divorce and started a new television career. Pat has moved on with his new wife and kids, too. Number 1. Paul Hollywood's Affair The American Baking Show ended not one but two marriages in one single blow. Now the show didn't air on Food Network, but it did include the channel's Mexican cooking veteran, Marcella Valladolid. The celebrity chef was reportedly swooned by the great British Bake Off judge, Paul Hollywood. The duo came together to judge the American knockoff, the show that aired on Columbia Broadcasting System. And this is when their on-screen banter turned into something far more, something forbidden. Marcella and Paul were caught cheating on their respective partners with each other. The American Baking Show was eventually canceled, but the celebrity chefs had to live with the consequences of their short-lived fling. Valladolid and her husband took a divorce, and Paul got into serious trouble with his wife. Hollywood cited the affair as the biggest mistake of his life publicly, perhaps in an effort to save his marriage. He was given the boot too, but later his wife and him reconciled. Very briefly though, Paul was caught kissing the Bake Off champion, Candace Brown, 
and well, his wife had had enough. The couple divorced after 20 years of marriage. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.